Howdy, y'all. We're talking about the Stegodon today. This is, I think, my favorite unit in the Seraphon army. I've always loved the Stegodon. Uh, I kind of, I kind of, I've been waiting for them to be good. I ran a lot of Engines of the Gods in the previous Battle Zone, and now the Stegodons are, are good, and you're probably only going to want run one Engine of the Gods, but you've got more freedom to run Stegodons now. So we're going to talk some Stegodon strategy. Um, great model. It's it's got a nice little howda there that you can that you can build a ton of different stuff on. In fact, it's quite customizable. I'll show you a couple of mine real quick. So, like you can put whatever you want to on top of these. I put a little uh, a knight and cantor kit bash with the sars head and uh, a um, pterodon flame thing as well. That was kind of fun. I also did a. I just, you know, I'm really just bragging about how many Stegodons I have right now because they're sold out. They've been sold out for months, so you know, bear with me. <laughs> uh, here we go. We got a uh, a ballista from the Stormcast on this one. Kind of shows off the the uh, Sky Streak bow for that guy. And then my Engine of the Gods, I used a Hurricaneum. Pretty cool. So it offers a lot of kit bashing capability because that howda is on there so it makes it really nice oh i do have one pro tip as you're building them these little guys here in the back these things put a magnet on those so that they just snap right on because otherwise when you're transporting when you're playing with them you'll break those off constantly all right so there's a couple of my stegodons i have i have more um now that the bragging of how many stegodons is over let's actually look at these these guys and and what can they do? How can we pump them up? And what does an army look like when we're running some Stegodons? So here's their War Scroll card. We've got a movement of eight, which brackets, depending on how much damage they take, 10 wounds, four up save, and five bravery. They have a lot of um, profiles here for missiles and melee. And that's actually fairly important because we have ways to give extra attacks and so it's kind of nice that we have a bunch of different profiles that we can all buff up. So in our missile, we have the Meteoric Javelins. Those are the Skink guys. You'll see that with, you know, the it's same with Engine, B uh, Bastilodon, Stegodon Chief, and the normal Stegodon all have these Skinks that are throwing their Javelins off. Uh, pretty short range, four attacks, fives and fours. These don't really do too much damage. You might get one through every once in a while. But honestly, I forget about them half the time. The Sky Streak Bow. Now this thing got better. <laughs> I really, really like the Sky Streak Bow. It's got 24 inch range plus your 8 inch movement. You know, you're hitting, the, your, your threat range is 32 inches just right off the bat. So you can hit just about whatever you want to turn one. You only have three attacks. They're threes and threes, minus one Ren, but three damage. Whew. Uh, you're not going to get all three of these through. Don't count on that, especially if you're trying to hit a hero. But you'll probably get one through. Especially if you have multiple Stegodons, you'll get one or two through on these guys. And three damage each. These things hit hard. They hit hard, especially if you're trying to hit some support heroes that are kind of hiding in the back. Uh, most people don't, don't account for 32-inch threat range. And there's actually ways to make that more, which we'll get to in a minute. So I love these Sky Streak bows. Great range and three damage. There's not a lot of stuff that does three damage on an attack from that far away. The other missile profile and the other option is the flamethrowers, the sunfire throwers. There's a. I don't think these have as much of a role as the Sky Streak Bow. I like the Sky Streak Bow because you can hit stuff constantly. But the Sunfire Throwers, which we'll look at the attack profile here in a second. We can we can scroll to the next page. Um, what they do, and you see it here with this uh, Gout of Sunfire, you're rolling for each model within range of that 8 inches, and on a 5-up they suffer a mortal wound. So it's great for clearing hordes. I think the only way I ever take this is if I take that on the Skink Chief, because there's ways to give you an extra attack on that, so you'd be rolling 2 dice, because there is an actual attack number on this profile. And so you can actually pump that up with Prime War Beast. But other than that, I don't think I'm going to normally take these on normal Stegodons unless in your meta you're just facing hordes constantly. 
So I think I, I usually default to the Sky Street Bow just for the, the ability of getting long range on that thing. The melee weapons, we have the Meteoric War Spear. This is actually the melee profile for the Skink Chief. So it's okay. Three attacks, threes and threes, minus one run, one damage. So, you know, it's, it's worth a, about a damage or so, maybe, if you can get it through. Not too impactful, but it does give us an extra, an extra attack profile that we can buff up. Massive Horns. Two attacks, threes and threes, minus one run, four damage. So the horns got damaging. Less rend than they used to have, but that's fine. It seems like all of our stuff is minus one rend. And, uh, but that four damage is pretty nice. Grinding Jaws, two attacks, threes and threes, minus one rend, two damage. And Crushing Stomps, five attacks, threes and threes, minus one rend, two damage. So we have a lot of attacks coming through. Um, a lot of different profiles. And I'm glad that they gave them all different profiles so we can pump them up a little bit. Let's look at those, uh, the extra abilities here. So the crew, now this one's critical. The crew, <laughs> the model has a skink crew that attack with meteoric javelins and one of the following weapons, Sky Street Boat or Sunfire Thrust. For rules purposes, the crew are treated in the same manner as a mount. So for rule purposes, the Sky Street Bow is a mount. It's treated the same as the mount. So that's important because there's things that we can increase that mount attacks by. Skink Chief, this model can include one Skink Chief. If he does, he becomes a hero, and he gets command traits. So, uh, though it says if you have an artifact power, it only affects the Skink Chief. That's all pretty standard stuff. Abilities, Armored Crest. At the start of the combat phase, you can pick one enemy model within three of this, of this model. That has up to five models, one enemy unit. I think I said that wrong. Uh, if you do, until the end of that phase, add one of the save rolls made by that unit that target this model. So this is pretty nice if you're attacking smaller unit sizes or heroes you get just an automatic plus one to your save it doesn't help if you're attacking hordes or you know your standard battle line of 10 units but if you're taking this guy into a more elite unit that plus one to save is pretty nice it goes up to a three up save makes him all of a sudden a little bit more tanky uh, we have the sunfire the flamethrower rules that we just talked about steadfast majesty you can reroll battle shocks for friendly skink units when they're wholly within 18 of any second units this is actually pretty useful in Coalesced, so Skinks have a lot lower bravery. They have a bravery of 5 instead of 10 in Coalesced, and so re-rolling that is actually fairly important for those guys, so make sure you remember that. Unstoppable Stampede, roll one dice for each enemy model, each enemy unit that's within one inch of this model when this model finishes a charge on a 3-up, that enemy unit suffers D3 mortals. So we got a little mortal charge bonus here, and it's, it's pretty nice. On a 3-up, is is a pretty good roll that'll that'll go off most of the time you can do d3 mortals and it is for each enemy unit so pretty good and the command traits if you're taking the skink chief you pick a friendly skink unit wholly within 24 of this hero so that's pretty big radius and add one of the attack characteristics of melee weapons used by that skink unit um, and you can't benefit more than once if you look at the the keywords for both the normal Stegodon and the Stegodon Chief, they both have the Skink keyword, and so that's pretty important because we have a lot of abilities that 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 can proc onto Skink keyworded models, and so we'll be using that a lot. Uh, let's look at the what the damage profile for the different Stegodons is, and this is just purely based on their War Scroll, not including the mortals on the charge but uh, including everything else. So Skink Chief with, on the Stegodon with the Sky Street Bow, he's on a four up save uh, from the enemy. He's gonna average about 10, 10 and a half damage. Just the normal Stegodon uh, versus a four up is, is doing nine and a half. And then the engine of the gods on a, versus a four up is doing six, almost seven. So you can see a little bit of a drop off there. The Skink Chief gets a little bit extra bonus from his weapon. But honestly, not much. It's not even it's not even one damage difference. So just based on their basic stats, they're pretty close, the Skink Chief and the Stegodon. But we'll see a little bit of difference as we start pumping that up. The Engine of the Gods suffers because it doesn't have the Sky Streak Bow. It does have an ability that you might get some mortal wounds, D3 mortal wounds at range. And so that'll kind of make up the difference there if you can roll decently for that. Um, and it'll get it back into range, but it wasn't included in this. Uh, as we look at as we look at what kind of damage they do, you'll notice all the melee attacks are the same between all three of these. 
And so they hold a pretty similar profile. So a lot of the stuff that we do with the Skink Chief, you can also do for the Engine of the Gods. And um, any of the things that we do that aren't hero specific would affect the Stegodon as well, so you can pump up these, these damage numbers. I wanna look at the Battalion real quick. So the Battalions that you can put these guys in are, is, are the Thunderquake Tipple Host and the Thunderquake Star Host. The Thunderquake Star Host, which is the one that goes in Starborn, I don't, it's a shame. I don't really see this being run a lot. In, in, in Starborn, you, you know, this is your skink focus faction. I think you're going you're gonna to aim more at some of the other abilities in that sub-faction, mainly with actual skinks as your uh, battle lines and throwing a bunch of dice at people. But if you are going to run this in Starborn, I would probably be looking at uh, taking an Engine of the Gods and two Stegodons so you can just get extra heals. So you'd be healing D3 in this battalion plus D3 from the Engine of the Gods. So you should be able to keep these guys pretty, pretty well healed up. That will help, but I think they're still better in Coalesced. In the Coalesced one, the Temple Host, where you can take an Engine or a Stegodon Chief, and then two Stegodons and a hunting pack. That it's a pretty good battalion. You all you like all those units, especially the Salamander hunting pack that, that you'd include in there. In your hero phase, declare if this battalion will be swift or savage. If you choose for it to be swift until your next hero phase, units from this battalion can run and still shoot and or charge in the same turn. If you choose savage until your next hero phase, add one of the attack characteristics of melee weapons used by units from this battalion. So this is this is pretty awesome. I really like this because in turn one, what I end up using a lot is I'm going to go swift and run and shoot and or charge. And so now that 32 inch range is even further. You know, if, if you're adding six to your run, you know, for that Sky Streak bow, now you're up to a 38 inch range. You can even pump that up further if you if you move the constellation to get 39 if you really wanted to. Um, but then once you get into combat, you flip this over in turn two to Savage. And now you get plus one to all your melee attacks. And so it it's a very versatile battalion. Do I need more movement? Do I need more attacks? And I like that it has kind of that flow of first turn, I'm getting, I'm getting set up. Second turn, here's all my damage. So I, I really like that. Uh, good battalion has all, all things I like in it. It, it's fairly expensive, but you know that's some battalions are these days. And what it gives you, I think, is versatile enough that that it's worth it. A couple of things I wanted to highlight first were Thunder Lizard abilities and command traits because I think a lot of this goes along with the Stegodons. You're going to see Stegodons in the Thunder Lizard sub faction a lot because it offers a couple of different things. Um, the ability is Mighty Mighty War Beast. It adds two to the wound characteristics of all the Thunder Lizard monsters. And so your Stegodons are now going to have 12 wounds. And in Coalesce, when they're, when they're minus in one damage that you're taking, that 12 wounds is all of a sudden even more. So it's harder to get those wounds through, and they've got more of them. So I think that that's, that's pretty good for those Stegodons. 12 wounds for... You know, 200 points for those Stegodons is, is pretty nice. Also, the we've got a command ability, which doesn't it doesn't really affect the Stegodons too much, but if you are taking an Engine of the Gods, this command ability allows you to fire the Engine of the Gods twice. So that is pretty nice if you're taking the Engine. You can hopefully get maybe some summons if you need bodies or heals if you need that. Uh, so that is a pretty good command ability. It, it includes some stuff for Bastildons. I wish it included something specific for the stegodons like fire our sky streak bow again <laughs> that would be nice um our command trait this one is pretty awesome i really like this one it's prime war beast you add this to a general with a monster mount and add one to the attack characteristics of weapons used by that general's mount and so if you remember it doesn't say in combat it just says to the general's mount and so when we look back at this rule here that says the crew and the Sky Streak bow count as the mount, we get an extra Sky Streak bow attack. So now we have four attacks. Plus, um, we have an extra horn attack, an extra jaw attack, an extra crushing stomp attack. And then Coalesce will have another jaw attack added onto that. So we can really pump that up. 
Um, so that's pretty good. The artifact is decent. We'll probably end up throwing that on a different hero. It does some mortals in the shooting phase, which isn't bad. I mean, it's it, it can do some damage. So that's kind of nice. Um, but we're adding that, that Prime War Beast command trait is pretty nice, and the extra wounds is really nice. So let's look at some of the buffs we can give. Let's look first at the Skink Chief. What are some of the buffs we can give our Skink Chief? So in Coalesced, we get plus one to our jaw attacks. Thunderquake, we're getting plus one to attacks if we're going Savage. We can even adjust the Constellation for Seraphim to plus one to a hero attacks. So that would include the, uh, the, the model here. It doesn't, doesn't just go for the actual hero. Um, Thunderquake, Command Trait, Prime, Warby. So we're given plus one to our mount attacks if we're making this guy our general. And then some other, other things that we can add to him. The, his own command point. He can use that on himself to give him plus one to attacks. <laughs> and then the little Skink Priest. 70 points. Awesome abilities. You can actually give a plus one to his save. Run, shoot, and charge if, if, you're, if you're using Savage instead of Swift. And then plus one to hit as a command point. So we have a lot of different abilities here, but just look at how many pluses to attacks we can add to this model. And it gets to be cr pretty crazy. So if we're doing our plus one to jaws, plus one to attacks for Thunderquake, plus one to attacks for Constellation, plus one to mount attacks for War Beast, and plus one to attacks from his own command trait. So we're spending one command point, and now his damage is up to 22 versus a four up save. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, we're, we're doing 22 damage versus a 4-up save. I mean, you're, that's going to kill any hero that has a 4-up save. Um, unless they have an after save, obviously. But that's going to kill a lot of stuff. But wait. It gets better. Let's say we're playing an army that has a lot of command points. Is that Seraphim? Yes, it is. So we're going to do the same thing as we just saw. But now we're going to reroll hit rolls of one, which we can either get that from the Star Priest, his his spell, Hand of Glory, or from a command point. And then spend a command point from the Skink Priest for a plus one to hit. And we're looking at 31 damage, almost 32 damage versus a four up save. <laughs> uh, that's pretty awesome. Um, no, that's that's very awesome. This is This guy can put out a ton of damage. That is three command points spent. But in Seraphon, you generally have quite a few at our disposal. And so I think, you know, if you want to, you can send this guy across the board. And, I mean, versus Plague Monks, he's going to kill pretty much the entire... Well, he will kill the entire unit of Plague Monks. Send him against some power piece that they've left unscreened, and he'll probably kill it. He will do a ton of damage. And it doesn't take too much work. It, you do have to be cognizant of all these extra attacks and where to allocate them. So make sure you do some practice runs because otherwise you'll be staring at your war scroll and trying to add up on your fingers how many extra attacks you've got. So it can get a little crazy. But look at that. Whew. 31 damage versus a 4-up save. Yes, please. All right, let's look at what the... That, that's the Skink Chief. Let's look at what the Stegadon with the with just the normal second on with the bow so his basic pluses will be coalesce so he gets plus one to his jaw attacks and then thunderquake if we give him plus one via the savage so he's going to be doing 12 damage versus a four up save not nearly as good not nearly as sexy as that 31 damage from the skink priest or the the skink chief but we haven't we haven't really added too much extra here he only gets a few of the buffs not as much as the hero variant but we can buff that up a little bit. So if we were crazy and we just had a ton of extra command points to spend, um, we can buff them up more. If we reroll hit rolls of one via either the spell or the command trait, get another skink priest on this guy for that plus one to hit, and the skink chief command point for another plus one attacks. And now your stegadon is doing 20 damage. That is awesome, especially for a battle line monster that doesn't cost all that much uh, 20 damage I will take that any day of the week so it does cost a little bit more you know you are spending three command points here to get that but uh, it, in the right situations if you really need them to get into something that it's it's quite useful so 
I tend to find that I end up at that more of that 12 damage for a four up, which I mean, let's be honest, that's still that's not shabby. I mean, that's 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 pretty good. You know, that's that's gonna kill a lot of heroes right there. That's gonna kill a lot of elite units, but it's not nearly as good as this guy. Your 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 skink chief is gonna be the heavy hitter, and these guys are gonna be your support there. Um, if if you send them in first, you can always buff them up with your other stuff and make them do a lot of heavy damage. Um, I want to kind of look now at a couple of either command traits or artifacts that we can add to our stegodons, but and then we'll look at a sample list that I've built for the stegodons. So. Because they are skink keyworded, they can take skink command traits. And so you'll be looking at these command traits if you're just going generic coalesced or generic starborn and not in one of the sub factions, because in the sub factions you end up having to take their own command traits and artifacts. So I do like these stegodons in the generic coalesced because you get access to these command traits, which, which uh, are pretty good. So the first one, you can basically, if he's not a wizard, which none of these guys are, they can do the Herald of the Old Ones command ability from the Skink Priest. So that's that plus one to hit. And you don't have to use a command point. So it's not bad, um, but I don't think it's the best one. The, the number two, the second command trait, now this one is the one I absolutely love. Add one to the general's move characteristics and add one to the save rolls for attacks that target them. So now that Skink Chief is a three up save and if he's going into another hero or an elite unit he gets another plus one from his stegadon helm and he's down to a two up so pretty good <laughs> when all of a sudden their hero is staring at a two up skink chief that's gonna do 30 damage back <laughs> love it so i really like that nimble command trait cunning is is decent at the start of the combat phase you pick one enemy hero within three roll a dice on a four up the stuff uh what I, did i just say that was decent no this is terrible never ever take this so at the start of combat phase an enemy hero has a 50 percent chance to take one mortal wound who wrote that no that's terrible never take that never ever take that nimble is the one you want let's look at the artifacts so artifacts of power here these ones are actually all pretty decent. I kind of like them. Incandescent Retresses. Now, you probably remember this from the old Slon um, artifact. I guess it was, a, it was a generic Seraphim back in the day. Back in the day, like three months ago. So the first time the bear is slain, you have a chance on a, on a four up. You basically are healed, come back full health. Uh, it's, it's not bad. It's pretty good. You know, a 50% chance to just come back with all your health. <laughs> not too shabby. But I would, I would rather not leave that to a one dice roll. Um, the next two are my, are my favorites. And I, I struggle which one to take because I like them both. Cloak of Feathers. Uh, now this Cloak of Feathers used to be worn by the Skink Priest. I guess he lost it and he's just giving it to whoever he wants to now. Um, but subtract one from hit rolls for attacks that target the bearer. Notice it doesn't say just in melee or anything. So he's just a, a, a permanent minus one to hit. In addition, add four to the bear's move four inches to the bear's move characteristics and the bear can fly <laughs> okay so this is like three artifacts in one minus one to hit plus four to move and you get to fly this is this is awesome this is this is three incredible abilities here that i will take every day of the week on this skink priest because minus one to hit he's going to be more survivable so if he takes nimble and he goes into an elite unit, he's gonna be two up save, minus one to hit. <laughs> this guy's gonna be really hard to kill. And uh, now we've added four inches to his movement. So he's that would put him at a 12 inch move plus uh, run. So we're looking at 18 inch and we can charge him in Thunderquake if we want to at the same time. And so now you can pretty much alpha strike with this guy if you've got this cloak of feathers on. Especially if you turn the constellation to extra run and charge um, and he can fly you know a flying uh, triceratops <laughs> yes please the other one stegged on helm add one to save rolls that target the bear so this is another just pretty nice one that kind of that kind of combos pretty well with nimble and so this one gives you a plus one to your save this one 
gives you uh, Sacred Stegodon Helm gives you another plus one to your save. And so now he would be at a base two up save just all the time. And so if you go into an elite unit, all of a sudden you're going to be a one up save. So you'll still fail ones unless they have, you know, it's not a natural one like the Bastildon. So, um, but it also does, in addition, add one to the damage character system the melee weapon used by the bear if you make a charge roll. Uh, that's, that's only going to affect the Skink Chief's weapon, not all the other stuff. So uh, not too impactful. Really, you'd take it for that save roll. So if you want to make him super tanky, take the Nimble and the Sacred Stegodon Helm. But honestly, I think maybe that minus one to hit, since you're already going to be at probably a two-up save versus the hero, is, is better. So for a sample list, we're going to try to keep this under 30 minutes here. <laughs> so I just love Stegodons, man. Um, so for my sample list here, I'm, I'm going Thunder Lizard in Coalesced. That's where I like to put my Stegodons. I love Thunder Lizards. I love Coalesced. I love Stegodons. It may not be the best Seraphon list, but it's it's the most fun. Charging, charging a bunch of Triceratops across the table is always fun. So we are taking Lord Croak, of course. Uh, he's he's going to be our command point generator and our comet bringer downer. So he's gonna he's gonna be helping us with some mortals against their support heroes. I'm gonna take the spell Stellar Tempest, and I'm I'm gonna put that uh, so he can deal with some hordes because because I'm not gonna have a lot to deal with hordes here, and so I like that spell because it can it can reach out across the board and and get some hordes. Um, my Stegodon with Skink Chief, he is going to be my general, so I can put Prime War Beast on him to give him those extra attacks. And I'm taking that Artifact Cloak of Feathers. Um, so, he he will be moving fast. You can pretty much Alpha Strike him turn one if you want to. Um, if, if they left something undefended, you might drop this guy last and see where you can put him into. I'm going to take a Skink Priest and a Skink Star Priest. These two little, little fellas usually end up in every single one of my lists they they're just so great along with a 40 block of skinks they're they're gonna be my bodies but also when you just take all your dice and just dump them on the table and say here's 80 shots from <laughs> from 16 inches away so um the skink priest is is great though both both of them can do stuff on skink keyworded stuff which is the stegodon as well so they can they can buff your stegodons up turn one before you shoot them across the board if you need to um, so I'm taking my Skink Priest and Skink Star Priest. I'm putting the artifact that Fusil of Conflagration on the Skink Priest just to give him a little bit of range shooting if he needs it. And the spell Hand of Glory, which gives you your reroll hit rolls of one. So I'm going to try to put that on my Stegodon Skink Chief if I can and uh, let him save his command point for something a little bit better. I'm going to take five Source Guard just to help out my Croak, give him an extra 10 wounds to pass off to them. And my 40 skinks, there's my bodies and my, my horde of shooting. And they're also fast with your skink priest if you get the run in charge. And then my two stegodons with sky streak bows. And to fill out the Thunderquake Temple host, I'm adding in the full unit of salamander hunting pack. That's four salamanders and the handlers that go with them. And that's 1990. I would have liked to put in some some spells here because bound spells are pretty awesome but i'm really just leaning into the thunderquake here so you can drop the guard if you want to because you don't need the extra battle line because in this in thunder lizard your stegodons count as battle line so if you want to drop the source guard live a little bit more dangerously with croak um, you can add in you know 110 points of, of bound spells and they're well worth it if you want to do that but I like this list. I'm, I'm going to send off my Stegodons to, to cause some havoc. Maybe counter punch with all the Skinks if I need to. They can hit across the board turn one if you need them to. And then the Salamanders will come in and, and blow up whatever has high armor save that, that need, needs to do some mortals against. Great list. That Stegodon Seat Chief is going to do a ton of damage. As, as well as your your uh, 40 skinks buffed up with the, the priest and the star priest and your hunting pack. So great list all around. I really like it. Only 113 wounds. No way to summon. But, you know, when you're playing Coalesce, that's sometimes how it turns out. 
So I'm trying to keep this under 30 minutes, so I've got eight seconds left. <laughs> Let me know what you're doing with your stegodons, how much you love them. Let's put down in the comments, you know, what's your, what's your list looking like. Bring that stegodon love. All right. Catch you guys later.